Hello viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Future Friday, we're going to talk about spin launch. Is it a hopeful thing or is it a hoax? So let's dive right into it. Now first we have to understand what problem exactly they are trying to solve. Well, problem is with normal rockets is that they are big and they are ludicrously expensive. On top of that, they have low cadence, simply meaning you can't launch them again and again and again and again. And again. So you can't actually have like a scenario where it's like even something like Falcon 9, you can't have like, you know, let's launch 10 Falcon 9 in one day from one launch pad. It's not going to happen. And it also looks very polluting. So uh, now the reason why I'm saying that it looks polluting, no matter what else you will try, sooner or later you will end up releasing this amount of pollutant one way or the other. It's just one of those things like a diesel locomotive does look polluting, but it's actually polluting less compared to an electric locomotive. It's just that you are not seeing giant coal power plant or whatever you ha else you have, um, you know, uh, wasting energy in transmission system, then wasting energy in the transformer, then wasting, right? It's one of those things. It's like looks cleaner. So... It looks very polluting and we want something simpler. It's like, this does work. Absolutely, it, I mean, we, it, we got to the moon. We built international space station utilizing that, but we need something simpler. It's like, you know, something simple. And uh, that's the whole point with this puppy is that we just want things to throw into space. We don't want to overthink to it. Like just don't have staging, something like that. It's just like throw into space. Now, that idea has been taken seriously, as in like somebody actually put their money down and got some investor, got their money down and actually built a prototype, as in like a physical, real prototype. Now, what this puppy is, is basically a huge vacuum chamber, because if you try to go high speed in an atmosphere, no, you can't. Atmosphere is like, no, that shall not fast. So that's the reality of it. You cannot tamper with it. You must meet, have a vacuum chamber. Then you have a self-balancing arm. Now, this is a very uh, difficult thing. For example, uh, you may think you have an arm and you're spinning it like that. That's doable. We have the technology. We have the engineering where we can like, okay, the bearings, the motors, uh, the braking system. We got that. We got this. Problem is it changes the mass. The moment you let go of that uh, projectile, your mass changes. Like your rod will be going from like so much strain to very little strain. How will it rebound quote unquote so that's a very difficult thing to manage not impossible but it's a difficult thing to manage and not to mention trying to manage that puppy in like you know something as small as this compared to what they want to build it's a very different thing so this let's say when you let go quote unquote you have 10 percent up down this puppy could have 60 percent up down when you uh, you know let go of things so that is a very difficult thing to balance it they have to figure out a way to balance that puppy and uh, they're gonna have a rocketed payload now this is very critical as well the idea looks like it's you're just gonna spin it fast and throw it but problem is you can't go there do that physics does not allow you to do that i will explain why uh, but you need a rocket at the other end so basically your payload it it looks like a pay complete payload but it's not once you actually have the full scale version you will have a rocket system uh, basically once you are launching it then this puppy will have a shell that will protect against atmospheric drag. Once you uh, go past the atmosphere, it will detach and you will have a rocket that is going to do the flying thing. And what they built in a prototype A, it was subsonic. It was not going even supersonic. Be very mindful. It was very slow, comparatively speaking. But it was a good demonstration. It's like we physically built it and we are physically showing it. And you can see that like uh, because it was not uh, uh, subsonic, there is a range between like, you know, supersonic and subsonic, like that border region kind of thing. And uh, that has very high turbulence, meaning uh, most aerodynamic surfaces do not work very well at that uh, system. And you can notice that uh, when they launch it, like you can see in the video, it started to tumble because even though they had fins that are supposed to stabilize it, the fins would like to either be supersonic or subsonic. Don't be in that between range. This puppy launched them in between range. It's like it started to do something like that. So that's the whole point. Now you may be like, okay, how, uh, you know, fast they're going to spin that? Well, that's the interesting part. If they try to spin it in one go at that fast, it simply will fall apart. There is no mechanism that can dump that much energy. But if you slowly start to increase the RPM, its physics becomes much more gentle, much more palatable for your motors, for your gears, for your arm, everything. So this puppy will take almost an hour to spin up. Be very mindful of that. You may think like, okay, I'm going to load it, uh, you know, load the stuff, spin it, done. No, it's going to take spin up time, meaning from, uh, 0 RPM to 10 RPM to 100 RPM to 1000 RPM. Uh, I don't think they're going to go to 1000, 250 RPM, but it's going to take time. They're going to slowly spool it up because if they directly try to do that in one lot RPM, yeah, it's not going to happen. It's, like Physics does not stop you. It's just your engineering material will go poof if you try to do that. So that's the idea. Have a vacuum chamber, have something spinning around very, very, very fast. And once you are ready, once you have the enough velocity, you let it go. And this puppy goes to above atmosphere. Then it detaches its payload covering. Then you using the rocket, it goes to the final leg of the space. 
Now, all that sounds very good, but you have to understand we have something known as atmosphere. Now, atmosphere is the realistically limiting factor on this puppy simply because you cannot go orbital velocity at sea level. No matter what you do, orbital velocity is not achievable in sea level. Meaning, even if you have ICBM, that's a, that picked up GG amounts of it, 28,000 km per, uh, per hour speed, and the moment it starts to come to atmosphere, atmosphere starts to slow it down. And that's the whole job of heat shield. Like for assume, uh, it has one megawatt of energy when it's coming down. Okay. Now, heat shield reacts with the atmosphere dumps that energy so what's happening that one megawatt is slowing down inherently you had a one megawatt then by the time it touches the surface it will be as low as like let's say 300 kilowatts so that's the reality of it you do not want to or like to be more exact you physically cannot travel at uh, orbital velocity in atmosphere our atmosphere is way too thick heck to be fair uh, you can't even do that in mars even with such a thin atmosphere that speed is so high that's why even on mars when you are sending probes you have to use heat shields so physics does not allow you to go to uh, like you know orbital speed like in a vacuum chamber you can go all gg all you want you can actually achieve 28000 km per hour the moment you launch it atmosphere is like oh lunch is gonna cook it that's it nothing is gonna happen it's just gonna poof it so you have to understand that so what are you actually doing yeah, I still talked about like this is from their own presentation they have stage two they have stage one uh, they have payload they have fairing it's like is it a different compared to a normal rocket? Short answer, no. All you are doing is adding a little bit of height and a little bit of speed. Now be mindful, why I'm saying a little bit of height, a little bit of speed? Simply because if you actually try to add majority of the speed, the atmosphere will take it away. So you can't really add that much. In terms of height, height will become your own issue because if you directly try to fire something like this and it went like let's say 150 km per hour, it's gonna fall down. You don't want to go up, you want to go up enough where you are clear of the atmosphere. That's the whole point of, that's the reason why rocket goes up. But if you notice any rocket launch, you will have noticed that rocket goes up and then it turns. Once it clears the atmosphere, it's like, so you have to be very mindful of that. You do not want height. Even if you can achieve it, even if you, let's say, yeet this puppy to 150 km uh, in terms of height, you do not want to do that because inherently now your rocket has to cancel that velocity. And inherently from its point of view, from rocket's vantage point of view, it's like, yeah, I have zero velocity. Now I have to accelerate to full speed. So you can't give it, a, you know, height advantage and speed. Atmosphere is like, <laughs> lol, you can't really do that. So that's the reality of it. And it needs a full rocket anyway. That's the reason why nobody is like taking this seriously. It's like, if you already have stage one, if you already have stage two, if you already have a complete rocket why the hell you are using the spin launch system why the heck just just expand this puppy and done go home sweet dreams it's like why are you trying to build something that convoluted and that's the biggest issue with this puppy simply because the delta v basically how much velocity you are adding to this puppy that's very significant uh, insignificant when you look from a satellite's point of view it's like satellite let's say have 28,000 km per hour how much energy did the spin launch added the number is surprisingly small it's like does not matter that much so that's the reality of it it if you simplify it like people have tried to make a very very fast accelerating rockets for example uh, this puppy this is a icbm interceptor and um, it goes very fast as in it can sustain 100 g acceleration let that sink in it does not peak at 100 g it can sustain that puppy it goes so fast that the tip has heat shield while it's being launched from sea level so because it heats up so much so you can understand that the propellant motors basically things that are providing the push power they have to burn extra propellant just to compensate for the energy loss of the heat shield so inherently atmosphere is the limitation you cannot uh, do this properly financially viable and when you are building a complete rocket anyway it's just a disposable rocket with extra steps think it in that context you are building a complete rocket anyway completely liquid filled uh, rocket system why the heck don't use that rocket directly like just scale it up done go home so your dreams and rocket have the advantage that they clear the atmosphere slowly it's like when rocket starts to go up it's only at mark 2 and mark 3 it's not gonna go like mark 50 and like you know uh, in high sea level it's like the sea level is very slow very gentle and that's why you see at ma marks uh, you know max q the g forces are very gen gentle compared to this puppy this puppy will be ex experiencing ludicrously high g force so it's just a stupid idea now there is a history behind this idea. That's why people are like, you know, uh, investors are pouring their money into it because there was a project known as High Altitude Research Project or HARP or this puppy. Now, this puppy was built a bit differently because the person who wanted to build this, they wanted to build it through launch satellites. The government wanted to fund this. They were like, I'm not sure that you can actually do that, but this will allow, uh, this allowed them to study a lot of re-entry geometry, meaning it's one thing to launch something into space, another like how the heck it's gonna re-entry, which is a very big deal for ICBM. So uh, this project was utilized thoroughly for figuring out how the heck something reacts 
to re-entry because it did fire something far enough fast enough that re-entry uh, was like you know they got a lot of amazing data with that so that was amazing now this puppy the at the biggest uh, they had multiple prototypes built and the biggest one that was built that was 410 millimeters meaning 41 centimeter meaning freaking huge uh, diameter barrel like and uh, if you may like okay that barrel looks a bit long well it's not one barrel what they did is basically took the naval gun and they just joined it it's like it was much more expensive to forge one giant barrel and barrels are very uh, high in engineering equipment you may think oh it's just a rod no it's like it goes ludicrously high uh, engineering tolerances have to be done because if you do not do it properly it will go boom the moment you fire it so that's why they, they just it was much cheaper rather than to build one giant thing it was cheaper to just bolt two of them and that's how they achieved the world record that which mind you at this point still stands of 180 kilometer meaning they crossed carmel line by 80 kilometers Carmel line is below this puppy, what they have achieved. So as you can see, like it was a huge thing. It was very huge. But reality was uh, when they were actually experimenting on this, this was very old technology. Uh, rockets were very fragile. They were like, launch it, poof, boom, poof, ding, tang, dong, ding. It's like they're very, very rarely they were working. But over time, while this was going on, NASA started to figuring things out. Russians started to figuring things out. And they realized very early on is like rocket is the way of the future simply because it has much uh, you know gentler g load for this uh, puppy they were achieving around 15,000 g they have achieved it now you may be like can we build things that can withstand this sort of g loads yes and no yes there are some technology like proximity fuses that can uh, survive that uh, there are gps guidance system that is used for artillery shell that can survive that but be mindful those take billions of dollars to manufacture like the factory that can make something that complicated and it requires a complete different supply chain if you have a normal silicon chip and uh, like you know that legs that come out of that black thing that you see in your circuit boards those legs will fall apart if at that sort of uh, g forces so everything has to be completely engineered from scratch so it, it may sound oh we can do that yes absolutely we can do that but it's very extensive and very expensive and be mindful this puppy only give one shock of 15,000 g uh what uh other spin launch will do is slowly expose this puppy to thousands of g-force for much longer time that's why like uh, people are like from a point of view you may think hey they are just you know picking up where they left off but yes they, they did not left this up it succeeded what they wanted to achieve they achieved it it was uh, like from a government's point of view it was a project successful simply because they learned a lot they went from i we hope that that's how icbms are warhead do reentry to oh that's exactly how it's going to do reentry that was amazing from government point of view this is gg but it was like the people behind it they were like you know we want to push it this to a point where it's like you know it can launch satellite that never happened simply because if you go to any satellite manufacturer it's like we want a satellite that can survive 15000 g's they're like that's the door can you please disappear in that so that's the reality of it and you do not uh, you know in their uh, final developments what they were trying to do was they had a system where they will use a smaller rocket to change direction because this was launching like this you wanted to go like this it's like you know this was doing this rocket will do this and then give the complete uh, delta v that was very difficult to do so this is one of those things where it's like it sounds good it sounds easy and like they have built it they have actually tested it but uh, when you actually think about it it's like calmly think about this you still have to use a rocket then what's the point of this puppy you're just adding extra steps and ludicrously expensive electronics that can survive 15,000 g's which was very difficult even with um, uh, you know today's fixed electronics basically most of our electronics are solid state now there's still limitation to that and your satellite cost will go let's say you know, for example starlink where they are developing each satellite for let's just say 100k that 100k will become 1 million or 200 million so you know like how the heck military uses that for shell they spent 10 years developing that puppy and once they mass produce it they are using it for everything just to trying to recoup the cost it's very expensive to develop something that does not go poof the moment you expose it to 15,000 g's and to be realistically speaking the artillery shell does not go this high they only go to 1000 to 2000 or even 10,000 15,000 is a whole different level and that puppy is supposed to go to 20,000 so it's practically hopeless when you actually sit down think about it it's practically useless simply because the moment you start to create a full-scale system it has whole new level of problem which they have not solved now physics does not stop them to solve it engineering does and engineering solutions generally require a lot of money for example you can watch their video which i have linked down below they still have not managed to figure out how to make a vacuum chamber You're like how do i know well you can watch the video and they will say i'm like what the hell why the heck there is a sound uh, thunderfoot pointed it out so it was kind of amazing it's like dude you still not have figured out how to make a vacuum chamber how the heck you're gonna do that full scale you simply cannot do that 
uh, you have to vacuum it out and the reason why they can't vacuum it out because they have a shaft that is spinning spinning shaft and uh, vacuum chambers they do not mix now you may like what if we put the motor also into vacuum chamber yes you can do that with motor stator you can't do that with rotor because stator can be cooled externally you can easily seal it and externally cool it without having any uh, you know gas coming in or out that's awesome that can be done but how the heck you gonna cool the rotor that's the problem you can't and what they are talking about is like multi megawatt class motors which like uh, same motors that are used in um, mechazilla in spacex they have like huge motors something like that i think two of those motors will be used here the rotor will heat up like crazy if you put them in vacuum so that cooling is the very big issue and that's the reason vacuum chambers are not very easy it's like i've seen people who are building uh, vacuum chambers low grade vacuum chambers just to run uh, basically simple experiment of like you know vapor uh, depositions it's very tedious trying to do this on this large scale good luck with that so that's the whole point yes you can solve it but the cost will go very high and no one will remake their satellite for your system so we stand on very high g loads it's like why like sell me this idea it's like some satellite manufacturer is gonna be like let me re-engineer my whole satellite why like what's the selling point you cannot be cheap these things are already tested at this point of uh, time when i'm making there are three companies astra which have already successfully achieved orbit electron which are reaching a point where they will re start to reuse their rocket spacex already reusing it and if they figure out uh, basically starship their price uh, would be so uncompetitive from every other point of view it's like either you use spacex or you use these puppy for like you know quick delivery that's it it's like yeah this is more expensive per ton wise per kilogram wise this is more expensive but it's like you know quick delivery 24 hour quick delivery this is like you know you wait a week then you do bulk delivery so that's the whole point nobody will oh we're gonna launch a whole satellite constellation in days each satellite will cost 10 times more minimum compared to other systems and not to mention your whole satellite has to be solid state it cannot have solar panels that deviate out because good luck finding a hinge that can work after 15,000 g of shock or 20,000 g of shock for one hour good luck finding that so that's the whole thing that g loading and you may be like okay rockets also go through g load that's absolutely true but they are single digit like 5g cg heck if you uh, pay attention to whenever uh basically spacex is launching something that very light and in geostationary you will hear out the call out like you know they are throttling the second stage engine to uh, maintain g forces they are trying to maintain it to like around 5g's you can hear that call out this puppy is like hundreds more than that so fundamentally uh this loading is only done for nine minutes after that you are in orbit you're done go home so dreams don't think about it this puppy will be like for hour that's very frustrating for every uh, electrical engineer and you're like you could literally have a scenario where you test your component it survived the moment you put in the spin launch it's like i can't uh, you know uh, you know handle this any longer it will disintegrate while you are launching it so that's the whole thing and when you will never have an option when you have cheaper stable options already in the market these things are already done one company already settled they got this they are uh, you know turbocharging their speed this company already working on the second gen neutron rocket and electron rocket they are trying to reuse it like these are done like multiple launches even as like they have already figured out how to make the rocket cheaply so what's the point of making spin launch because be mindful you have almost something like this onto the end of spin launch and it's non-reusable you still have to have engines and you still have to have liquid propellant which somehow i don't think it can be liquid propellant otherwise you will need huge oolage motor and if you have oolage motors why the heck not use the solid boosters anyway which which half program was planning to do they, they knew flat out it's like if they go to any engineers like hey can you make a turbo engineers will like i got this one the moment you say uh, this turbo pump has to stay in static position while it's going through high g load so like okay how, how high uh 20 000 g's yeah disappear 20 000 g load for bearing equipment that has to spin up yeah good luck with that that is ludicrously even ceramic bearings have hard time trying to you know withstand that kind of g loading and for hours <laughs> so you have to understand materials have a fatigue basically if you give them one shock they can manage it but like if you extend that shock it will shorten their lifespan so fundamentally it is one of those things where it looks good on paper once you actually sit down think about it you have cheaper options that are already taken care of it's like we got this and i'm pretty sure by the time spin launch actually makes a full scale assuming they actually get funding till that point uh there will be even more options than this and once they actually start to launch it once they actually have like you know final real world calculation it's like oops it will be like a space shuttle whereas like on paper space shuttle should cost 100 uh you know 100k or 500k and like they're like okay million let's just go with million and then they actually launch it's like wait a minute each shuttle is costed equivalent of 1.5 billion dollars so it's one of those things it does not make sense because we have atmosphere it can only work on moon not even on mars only on moon everywhere else it will flat out not work 
So this was my presentation on basically spin launch system. Hopefully you have liked it, learned from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it to my friend. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike. Press it twice to show me extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.